All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Another episode, and I'm pretty pumped to bring with you. Kevin's been on here before. He's here, and we got mm-hmm. Wade Shoemaker on the podcast today. Welcome to the podcast, Wade. Hey, man. How are y'all? We're doing good. Doing good. 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 Thank you. Thank you, brother Wade. Good, Wade. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Eating some M&Ms and, I'm and sorry, drinking, guys. Some, I'm... drinking some sweet tea and hitting the gym <laughs> and all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> at least that's what I'm I'll doing. I'll be totally... Totally transparent. I don't mm. drink sweet tea much at all. Are you serious? It's too sweet. Serious. Dude. It's no, bro, it bloats <laughs> me. I'll be honest. Like, like you wish you liked it, it or what? No, I mean, it's all right. I mean, I do dig it. I just don't like the bloat feeling after, uh, you know, I yeah. Really, yeah. I true. Really drink a Sprite or something. That is true. That does happen a lot for sure. That's maybe that's why I'm so bloated. I'm just drinking too much sweet tea or something. <laughs> yeah, it's all them them dues. Uh, oh, hey, 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 let's not let's not push it here. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You crossing whoa. the mm-hmm. line right there, Ken? <laughs> no, don't so, blame the dues, huh? Yeah, don't blame the dues. Mountain Dew can't okay. go wrong. Uh, okay. But we wanted to just dig in a few things today with you guys. Um, I, if you don't know about Wade, Wade, tell us where they can find you at and where your work and all that kind of stuff. Oh, um, mainly I do most of my dealings on Instagram. It's at Wade Shoemaker. <clears throat> and then if you want to take it a step further, my website link is, um, on Instagram and it's, it's pretty easy. I feel weird every time I say it, but it's <laughs> Wade at Wade Shoemaker.com. <laughs> um, I just, I feel weird when I say that, but, um, yeah. So mostly Instagram and then the website. Cool. Cool. Excuse me. And you guys, you got to check them out though. And I know a lot of you do. If you if you don't already, you're probably already following. If you haven't, start checking his workout. He does incredible photos and uh, kind of tell us like what what got you into you know like doing photography and stuff like that. And like where is that taking you at, Wade? Oh man, um, photography wise, I so my cousin, my cousin's my first cousin's wife was is a photographer and she's really good at it. Um, but basically I just really liked kind of what she did. She's got a real classy, uh, the way she edits is just timeless and stuff like that. It's not these fads that go around and I really appreciated it. And then I thought it would be cool to grab a cra- camera one day. And when I say that, I mean like iPhone six and I started taking photos, like mostly pile picks, you know, that's kind of the, trying the different angles and making sure the birds are belly up and clean. And, um, and then that kind of escalated. I got a GoPro and thought I was professional because of the pro and GoPro. And <laughs> that wasn't the truth. That was a lie. And, yeah. um, but it was like the four black. So, I mean, like I was there, but, um, but anyway, that didn't work out. And then I realized I needed something better. I bought a used camera from a pal out of Oklahoma. His name is Wes Morrison. Still a really good friend of mine. Um, but I had the camera for a whole three days. And he said, look, if you like it, pay me. If you don't, send it back. So uh, three days later, I asked him where to send the money. Huh. And uh, a couple months after that, I kicked it over in the water um, on our opening day of duck season and thought my pals were playing a big joke on me um, because I couldn't find it. Didn't know where it was. And then I went looking for it and kicked a very large limb at my feet. And that limb turned out to be my tripod that was laying flat on the ground underwater. Oh. Um, yep. So fished it out and immediately lost interest in opening day. And <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I knew that, at, that then, you know, like it was like more than just something fun to do. Like it wasn't like, you know, I don't know, just like a new baseball bat or something, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. You, so it was like. I've got to get another one. And I told my wife, I basically sulked and whined enough where she was like, okay, we'll get another one. <laughs> and, um, we did, we actually, uh, got a better one. And, uh, man, I mean, it, it just kind of escalated. I won a photo contest like in 2016. And wow. then that put me in a different, um, I think in a lot of different eyes or on dip, I guess on a different platform or uh-huh. whatever. And, uh, man, just from there, it, it escalated again. And, uh, I had a job, I worked at a railroad for a while. And then I, I think I learned creativity from, I worked at a church full time as a youth pastor for three years. Uh And I, that kind of fueled the creativity because if you're familiar with that world, um, you better be creative because you don't have money as a youth pastor. And, uh, we had to figure that out, how to make things happen in services. So, 
fast forward, I resigned, and then I went back to the railroad. Same one I quit the first time. They hired me as manager. Three years in, I decided to quit because that's when I won the contest and was just tired of my job, hated it. Great job, grateful for it, hated it. Um, and I said, you know what? I love the photo thing. I know a lot of people. Let's see if we can make this thing a full-time gig. And, uh, dude, I'm four years full-time now. So it's, Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was the, the quickest version of that story. And, but I, uh, but yeah, that's it. A lot of probably, I'm sure a lot of hard times through that, but it, now you're doing what you mm. love every day, right? Oh yeah. The first two years of that full time gig was not fun. That was mm. not the finest years of our marriage. I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Like financial, financially, you know, right. Um, lifestyle changes happened. Yeah. I'm sure you were just hustling hard, right? Trying to make that money. Yeah, man. It was, it's weird. Like I was, but it was like, I don't know, man. It just, it was one of those things that like, it was a slow grow. It still is, but now it's just not as slow. Uh -huh. And, uh, man, it was like doors would open and I would walk through them and, you know, we would go to that next level, get some relief. And then we'd be like, ah, oh, there's that frustration that we had, you know, a little while ago. Uh -huh. And then it was just, it, it was, it was a, it was a back and forth. And then now we're, we're at a place where we can breathe a lot more. So, Huh. Uh, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of just running with your head down and, and hoping you land on something. Yeah. So what, what picture did you take that won that contest? Was it waterfowl related? Yeah. So it was the waterfowl category for diverge. Oh, um, you did win that. Wow. Yeah. The, the waterfowl category. For yeah, diverge yeah. Five. Which picture was it? Yeah. Then? Oh man. Diverge five. Um, I'm trying to remember what the, Cause I know I've seen that guaranteed. That was basically, um, it was called behind the pile and it was a photo I was behind our pile of birds. We had shot some late season geese in Oklahoma, like February. Like, I think it was my birthday weekend, actually. And we went in there and we shot like 20 that day. I don't know what it was. It could have been 12, but at this point I'm thinking of 20 and we'll go with that. But we shot some and then in the background, it's not, it, was, it wasn't a low aperture camera. It was like a 10 to 24 wide angle mm -hmm. and probably a five, six or something aperture, but so it's not bokeh out real bad. So you can see the guys in the background standing by the layouts, just hanging out, chatting. And in the foreground is the, uh, what's in focus is the pile of birds. And it was basically like hunts over guys are hanging out and it showed the story. Like now the hunts over. So now it's time to hang out mm -hmm. and, and yeah. just talk about everything. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. I'll, I'll have to find it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking it up right to... now, actually. Kevin, Kevin's on it. <laughs> okay so um well I, I would look it up on instagram but you know what it's been down all morning so yes yep we chat about that yeah i've been i had a video go out today and i can't even like put it out on facebook or instagram because usually that's a um, i used to not think that was a good way to like push stuff but it actually is because i can tell <laughs> on stuff when i can't do that so oh well the the photo actually came up on uh facebook that that as you said is down so i'm gonna have to find another is group. it really it is <clears throat> it came up you said well it said it was on <clears throat> on facebook right so mm. I, I clicked on it and uh facebook is down too that, yep. that's part of the whole uh yeah they're related IG, yeah, all whatsapp, facebook, all that stuff. WhatsApp. Yeah. yeah so what do you do so do you uh you work for a specific company right for photos but then you you're also uh what do they call it like a freelancer right yeah, no, I'm actually all freelance. So, like, anybody okay. I work with is, okay. a, is what I would – I call them a client. A lot of them end up being – the goal for my company when I started was – and, I and like, I haven't copyrighted this, but I think I should. But um, I, the whole deal was relationships over rations. Uh -huh. And for me, it was – or it was, like, I wanted, to do, I wanted, like, a friend – I wanted a relationship with these people over yes. what they could give me. Yes. Um, and, and you know, like I know, you've got to have the ration side. You've got to get paid. But yeah. – at the end of the day, without that relation, if I can't have a relationship with the person I'm working with or for, then I don't want their money or their anything. Right. So, um, dude, you're preaching to me yeah. now. Like I've been saying that <laughs> for reals. I've been saying that when I talk to people or companies I work with, I'm like, I don't care about the pro. Like the product's cool, the money's cool. Yep. I agree. I, you do need that to a certain extent, but if we can't even talk and chat, and we don't become friends, then I don't want nope. it. I don't want. No, it. you don't want an awkward work no. workspace like that was my deal with the railroad. I hated, I didn't like the job. And then we got a GM. It was a, he's a great guy, man. He was my boss a long time ago. Still is a great guy. Um, but I couldn't work for him cause I managed the department that he used to manage. And now he's my GM. 
And he just wouldn't, the things I was doing was the things he taught me to do. But all of a sudden now that he's over me, that's not the things that should be done. So like, I just, it was, I'm not going to call it toxic, but it was just not a good, good place for me. And I was like, man, I got to get out of here. And now I've made sure that as a full-time guy doing what I'm doing, like if I can't, if it's awkward or if I can't sit in a room and have a conversation and do these things with you, um, and enjoy it, then I, then we, you need to find somebody else to do what I'm doing for you, you know? And that's just, just is what it is. And maybe I've left a lot of money on the table, you know, um, that way, but I've left a lot of stress on that table too. So true. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. yep. And health, because that obviously affects health too, you know, that's stress. And that's what we don't want. You talked about just enjoying life and, and being happy. That's worth a lot more than any money can pay you. That's for sure. You ain't lying, dude. So, so now this, now, um, doing this freelancing and getting to do what you love. And I'm sure, do you get to hunt much too while you're doing it? Or are you pretty much stuck behind the yeah. camera? And I don't mean stuck behind the camera like that's a bad thing. Cause I know you pr- probably love that. And I do too. Like sometimes I get as much out of getting something on film or a picture than I, as I do mm-hmm. if I was shooting, you know? Yeah, no, I, I get it. And sometimes I get to hunt. Um, it really and truly just depends on, you know, how the morning goes. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this with, um, one of the outfitters I work with, there's, you know, it, it, at dark, you can't take a photo. It's like not one worth having if you're trying mm-hmm. to get an action shot, right? Like, so right at shooting time, um, you're going to get, you know, you're trying to shoot at a 40th or 50th or 60th of a second, and then you've got your ISO up at, you know, 8,000, mm-hmm. which is fine just to get light, but anything moving is not going to turn out good. Right. Um, so, like, and my job is to get, the story behind the hunt. So like it, that means stuff moving. Um, so like right at shooting light, I'll shoot, you know, I'll have, I'll shoot early, but not every day. It just depends on what's going on. And I'll get to hunt. Except if I'm, I'm there for a lot of days and I'll get to shoot probably a fourth of them, maybe, maybe a half of them, depending on how it goes. But, um, and then I have a lot of days at home that I actually get to hunt. So that's by design. But, um, but most of the places that I work at, it's, it's more camera than, than gun. Uh-huh. Like it's meaning like no gun whatsoever. Right. Um, but, uh, there, there's a couple times I get to have the gun out and load it and pull the trigger. It just, it really depends on, I judge it. I play it by ear and, you know, the guys that I work with, I'm pretty upfront with them. Like, Hey, do you, do you, what do you, what's your expectation? And, um, you know, go from there. But if it's just like, a um, uh, Hey, we need you to do it. I'm videoing, you know, I do a little bit of that. Then there's no gun involved at all mm-hmm. <laughs> because there's <laughs> just right. not happening. Yeah, right. But, uh, exactly. Yeah. Photos sometimes, but it just, and it depends on, you know, it's it like, it's per client basis. Right. So it just depends. There's, there's no real solid answer there for me. I don't guess it just kind of varies. Mm. Situational. Yeah. That's the best word for it. Yeah. So that being, I mean, I'm sure we could talk about photos and stuff forever, but so you recently did a trip out with Kevin. Why don't you guys tell yeah. us a little bit about what, what all that entailed? Oh, man. That was uh, – Kevin, do you want to start with that or do you – No, go know? ahead. No, go ahead. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, well, no, it was good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm down to go with it, but, I mean, this that was your show. I'd like to hear your side. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, we did have – we did have a hunting opportunity with, with some folks out west and uh, – Wade, we were fortunate enough to have Wade out there, among others. But uh, Brother Wade was out there, um, kind of getting the lay of the land, doing some filming, or doing taking some photos, um, and just got to capture the moment that we were, you know, had the, the veteran and youth hunt yeah. going on. So that was really, really, really cool. We all enjoyed that. Um, captured some great moments, great photos of everybody. Including oh, old Uno was looking Uno. pretty studly. I was going to say including Uno. He's getting some great exposure. Thank you, <laughs> by the way. You know, uh, you're welcome. And Uno's yeah. photogenic, man. Yes. He is. He is. He's got that look. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's, got, he's that got that look. front cover of the magazine look. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, chiseled jawline, all uh-huh. that good stuff. You know, you know that that he's he's worthy of some dog GQ for sure. <laughs> Agreed. He's, Agreed. He's with he's with it. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, so so we were gracious enough to have uh, have Wade come and and uh, photo out there, and and I that was the time too. I got to finally meet meet Wade. You know, we got had great conversations over the last year. You know, and we got connected via like Pro Drive, really. You yeah, know, that was that's yeah, no doubt. Just kind of, I saw that he was doing some media stuff with Pro Drive, and kind of reached out to him via via IG and he's was very responsive. And then it just kind of culminated, you know, into some, some pretty candid IG conversations and some phone calls. And, you know, now the rest is history. Now he's, you know, coming out West and going to do some hunting and, you know, see what it's like. So yeah. well, I, I appreciate it, Wade. Yeah, no, thank you, man. What was your initial thoughts when you, was that the first time you had been out? Well, I guess that wasn't your first time being out West, but in the area that you guys were in, was that your first time, or like, have you been there it before? Was how'd you? What do no, you think never. about it? Well, initially, I didn't know what to think because I pulled up, and Kevin was in his underwear in the boat, so <laughs> I didn't know what what I'd saw. I was like, man, I pulled up, and the guys I was with, I was like, guys, he in his underwear? And, and, yeah. and the, the guy was like, no, man, surely not. And I was like, I'm pretty sure homeboy is in his tidy whities. <laughs> we, we put it in reverse, put the headlights on him, and sure enough, he was in his underwear. And I, I thought, like, my initial thought was, what? What like how did I get here? Like what am I? Like, I, I can't get home right now. Right? Yeah, right, right. I'm in the car, I'll have to beat everybody up and take this little red Corolla all the way to Louisiana. And I did not was not prepared mentally or emotionally for that. And um, we showed up anyway. Turns out, um, you should always tie your boat up when you put her on the dock, or or at least hey, if you're gonna tie a knot, put a couple of half inch half inches in there. Yeah, you know, you know one for just, you. One for the company, you know, yeah, whatever, <laughs> just to make sure. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I'm sure you felt like, oh, you got duped. <laughs> no, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, what? I mean, I, I see Kevin, like, he does, you know, he kills birds. And then, and I, you know, the guy that I was with, like, oh, he does, this is good. And he's like, we're going to do good. And I show up. And I'm like, man, this is a circus. What is going on? <laughs> yeah, two guys and, on the dock, one in his undies, you know? Yeah. No, it was only one guy on the dock at that point on the dock. <laughs> Oh, was it, you were okay. you were you were still in the boat. It was a dude oh, who was underwear in the boat and a guy on right. dock. I was and, to uh, oh, he was on. he was already in the boat by the time you sent him in his chones. Bro, he he had he jumped in the water to swim after his boat. Did you get so, did you get that part though? Did you get to actually see that? No, yeah, he, I, well, I, I saw him dry, like in his underwear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Like shaking, yeah. shaking. <laughs> <Like>, oh. <laughs> I can't yeah. imagine that water was too warm at that point. Well, and like I said, was, I was thankful that it was September. Yeah. Okay. Rather than some other months. Mm -hmm. I was yeah, like, okay. Rough. Okay. Rough. Yeah. Cause I may have just been sitting in the truck if it was any other month than that, you know, yeah. and just yeah. be like, okay, come get me when I thought. Yeah. I'll call you. <laughs> yeah. Don't call, Don't me, call me. I'll call you. Yep. Yeah. Right. Don't bother me. Actually, <laughs> just leave me alone. So yeah, so, that what, was quite what, a so once Kevin got his clothes back on, like how, did you guys, or did he just give you a big hug when he was in his underwear still, or what? No, he he, no, he, he hunted like that the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, so you should see cool. those pictures. I don't know if he showed those to you or not. I think those are um, top secret. Those are those are those are like boudoir. It was like you know, like boudoir, but it was like <laughs> boudoir. You never thought you'd be doing that kind of photo. No, <laughs> oh, I mean Playboy. Nor yeah, I. Mean, Playboy just released a cover with a dude on it. So, like, I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure it's Kevin. Um, yeah, but man, no, I can see um, why the Navy SEALs type, like to take them cold showers in the morning. There to, you, you know, go. Just, to just get them, like, We're going. Get the blood yeah. pumping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously. Oh, my gosh. Um, no, but seriously, um, it was great. After he put his clothes back on, we kind of, like, talked it out and, I settled down and then we hunted I and you know, <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I, I'm not lying. I didn't know what was going on. I've never met this dude. Had I, I can see. Yeah. Your brain was probably just Bro, spinning, huh? It, uh, that was, that's a word, but there's <laughs> other ones. Um, yeah. Zero dark 30. Oh, here we yeah. are. And you know, trying to get your mind right. And all of a sudden you see this. So, mm, yeah, it was, I mean, but I mean, what, you know, what a better way to start the whole week. True. You know, like <laughs> true. A good icebreaker. You know, no pun intended. Dude, now, yeah. now yeah. it's a party, and mm -hmm. we're going to have a good time. Yeah. Um, right. But, no, so it was great, man. I, it's just a different scene than what I'm used to. You know, and even though I've been west, I haven't been to that specific spot. Mm -hmm. And it's it's totally different. I mean, the, you know, the way you hunt, what you hunt, and 
Um, and honestly, like even the setup was different than anything I've ever done. Huh. Um, uh, and I mean, there's, uh, I, I can expand on that if, if need be, but like, yeah, I'd like to hear, just, I'd like to hear it your different. Man. Yeah. So like, I mean, we, we set up and, and there's like five, I would say probably five dozen, three and a half to four dozen, de- five, maybe four and a half dozen decoys, five dozen decoys out. And Kevin would know better, um, on that number, but then we've yeah, got, I think, yeah. then we've got, I think six spinners, um, and and the, that's not the weird part. Like the weirder part for me was like setting the decoys up so close to the bank, uh-huh. um, because a lot of times we're we put we put decoys away from us a lot, unless uh, depending on you know like a windbreak or something. But there was literally no wind, and we still had it against the bank. And uh, and I was sitting thinking, man, this is different, you know. But this ain't my this ain't my jam. Like I'm not used right. to this, so I'm rolling with it, and uh, you know they're there and. Uh, it was just it was just different because we set them up further away from us here, so they're not looking at us when they come in. Uh-huh. You know, like we want them away from us. And I right. mean, it obviously is what you're supposed to do up, you know, over there because it worked. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, it, and they when when we actually had the mallard show up, they they ate it up. Uh-huh. Now, I mean, not saying that we capitalized on it, but. <laughs> um, well, I say we, they capitalized on it, but, um, but they ate it up and it was just different for me, man. Like I'm just not used to opening like early. I'll throw a bunch of decoys out, but I, I've never set out six spinners on a public spread, you know, ever. Uh-huh. Um, not saying I won't, but, um, it's different. Uh, I, I enjoyed seeing it and looking at it and living it, but I was just something I soaked in. I was like, okay, this is cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then, and you know, and the other side is just hunting that type of water. I Man, I've never hunted that way ever because we're 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 all backwater at home. Uh-huh. You know, like if it just is, we're either lakes or backwater, and mostly backwater, and uh, or ponds, little ponds in the woods or something like that. But um, yeah, that's just it's something totally different that I had to kind of reset my brain like okay so this is how they do things here and i'm I, I can get down with this but it was fun yeah you know what um just being in a boat which you, you're used to it kevin's used to it oh, but yeah. like for me it was finally i don't know what took me so many years to finally get a boat out here but man i i was we were hunting too yeah, out of the boat you know first time and i was just like this is so sick like <laughs> i wish i would have bought a boat so much sooner it just felt like it opened up i mean it did it opened up a whole, it, whole new world and yes. to be honest with you yeah we did deal with some with other hunters um but that's just common for that time but it was just like dude this is gonna be so much more um on your own by yourself i know you're still gonna deal with hunters i know you're still gonna deal with people trying to come in or say you're in their spot that's just part of duck hunting but mm-hmm. like in reality, compared to my refuge life that I grew up doing, where mm-hmm. 100 yards north, 100 yards south, 100 yards east, yep. there's a hunter sitting there with two spinners and 60 decoys, just like you are, and you're like, how in the world am I going to do, you know, what's going to make them yep. pick this spot over the next? And But doing out of the boat and all these windows of opportunity opens and so many things like our delta and other things like that, it's like, and our river systems is like, my goodness, this is... Dude. I could, I cannot, Kevin. I see now why you just don't really <laughs> mess with refuges, and it's not. Yeah. That I'm still gonna hunt the refuge because that's what I cut my teeth on. That's what I was born mm-hmm. and put into. But man, it, I it was just like a surreal feeling. Like, I I, I think I almost cried. You know, <laughs> driving the butt on. <laughs> yeah. You know, a new yeah, will yeah. do that to you. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true too. That's true. No, and you know the other side of that is you're able to like if you walk in. Like you have nowhere to go except where you're at. Yep. And if you're in a boat, there's a way to get away. You know, you may shoot less or you may do better, but you can always get away from the people if you're in a boat. Yes. Right. Yes. And that's the win. That yes. is the win, dude. Yes. Cause yes. I mean, I, you know, like if you were asking me, because we're not all about like uh, shooting limits is great and everything, but my, me and my brother, when we have those moments, cause we hunt all the time together more than anybody. And I'm yeah. thankful for that because, like, he has a really flexible job that we can do that instead of me just being out there solo, which is yeah. fun, too. It has its times. But having, you know, either, like, a best friend or your brother, which is even better, 
Um, it's like we went out there and shot two mallards a piece, but we were the only ones out there. And it was like the best hunt. We'll say, hey, that was in our top five because we worked the birds. They were in close and we didn't deal with anybody else. And it was just yep. epic, right? But then we've had those times, oh, we shot 14 birds, but then we're just like gr disgruntled the whole time and all oh, these guys yeah. are sky busting. That's, you know, so I can see hunting on the river and maybe you only go out and shoot three birds a piece, but you're like in your own world, you know? Yep. That's, that's my thing, dude. That's I would, worth it. I would, like, we hunt a lot of woods. Um, and if if I can go in some flooded woods and shoot, me and, some, me and a couple buddies go shoot like six, four, five, six, eight ducks, I would rather do that than go shoot 18 or 24 with some more pals in a crowded, flooded field, you know? Every day. Um, yep. Yeah, I'm just. I'm, I don't know. I, I don't Hold on a second, Kev. Kind of Hold on a second, Wade. Are you there? Talk, brother. Okay, go ahead. Somehow yeah. just come disconnect. Go ahead. No, it's fine. I was just saying I don't use the word a lot, but because it kind of it, it kind of sugarcoats what's going on. But like I kind of value the hunt over the harvest uh -huh. a lot of times. Uh -huh. And and I and I keep it that way, and I and I say that the word that I'm talking about is hard. I don't use the word harvest a lot because it's. I mean, it, it is what it is. You know, like you are, you're, you're killing an animal, and mm -hmm. I don't I don't like to share code it a lot. And, mm -hmm. But but anyway, it's like I do I do I enjoy the hunt with my my pals, and I get I enjoy the chase. I enjoy setting ducks up or setting decoys up and all that other stuff. Um, and and when we shoot them, hey, that's huge, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. but. Man, I don't get to do it for fun as much as I used to anymore. Uh -huh. um, even though what I do is fun, um, there's there's about 30 days that I get to look at and say, okay, this is I can leave the camera at the house if I want to. Uh -huh. um, I, I never do, but but I do take that that time. Like I don't take it for granted. Uh -huh. So yeah. But anyway, yeah. No, that's that's huge. I mean, like the when you because you said what was the word you said? I keep wanting to say quality, but it wasn't quality. You said um. Over what? the harvest. You said something over the harvest. No, no. I don't know what's going on there, but mm -hmm. it keeps coming unplugged from my uh, phone for some reason. That you cut out there. What was that word again? The hunt. The over hunt. The harvest. Yeah. And and I think you like what you're saying is basically like the quality of it, like the hunt. Yep. Yeah. Of it. And the the, the setting. Because, I mean. Yeah. I have been out there before. I'll tell you this, and to me, that is not fun. His <laughs> being out mm. when it's hot, you're getting bit by mm. mosquitoes, and you don't shoot a thing. <laughs> now, I won't pick that any mm. day. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. Now no, you'll no. have good stories. Like those are, yeah. and that's the thing is, getting older, getting more mature. Me and Kevin have talked so much about this because he's on the the next level above me with just his mindset and stuff like that. And I'm slowly getting there. Like as you mature, you can see this process that hunters go through when they first start and it doesn't matter if you're five when you first start or if you're 45 you still got to go through those steps because your yes. first thing when you start hunting is oh i want to shoot a limit so bad and there's nothing wrong with that but if you're st been hunting for 20 years and you're still like that's all you care about like man it's kind of time to start maturing a little bit you know but yeah but um at the same time it's just like that's kind of the step i'm in i'm just like that um just the the quality of it and although like the struggles do make them memorable like you don't sometimes you don't really always talk about like the good hunts you're more talking about how hard it was walking through that mud and how you fell over Dude. and got soaking wet and then your gun jammed and those are the ones you really talk about and the funny stories about swimming around and in you know oh, in your man. underwear and all that stuff too. yeah yeah oh that will be t that will be spoken about and replayed <laughs> and retold many many right, right. Many hey, i'm here I'm here for great content. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why we love you, man. <laughs> well, you are succeeding. You are succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. <laughs> oh, man. So what do you got? Like, what do you got planned? Well, let's just do this first. What do you got planned for yourself as far as actually getting the hunt this year, Wade? You got anything specific in mind? Yeah. I mean, like my biggest run will be probably to hang out with Kevin again mm -hmm. next this next go around and that's a 10 day trip. Oh um, wow. I'll be fun. Yeah, it's 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 like two days of driving, six days of hunting, two days of driving and you know home and for me that's uh that's going to be the biggest trip I take this year but um 
there may be another one that kind of goes off the next little bit um, right after that, but that's going to be kind of a a, uh, a work slash fun trip. And then, man, I mean, that's after that, the rodeo starts, and I'm running around trying to trying to keep that stuff uh, going. I, do, I will say, um, normally I take a trip to some public land for like a week, uh-huh. um, like uh-huh. right in between our youth hunt and our opener. But uh, I've decided against it this year because just time. Um, and that's usually fun, but I kicked it out because I've got the trip with Kevin. And I would much rather spend my time there than I would Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yep. Yeah. You no guys, doubt. You guys are going to have have a good time. I mean, oh, dude. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, we're getting all, we're all getting giddy. You know, all of us, all of us duck hunters are watching weather, you know. <laughs> and, We've got a group text of like a three week <laughs> forecast. It's like, ah, it's going to be good, guys. <laughs> no one that's not going to stick. No one is going to be yeah. right. 78 degrees on, yeah. open, you know, opening day. Yep. Yeah. But, yeah. No. Oh, and, yeah. and I am, I do, I do the so goose thing for fun. Um, if you, if you call that fun, I do, but <laughs> I chase snow geese with some pals. I like so to, that'll be exciting. Yeah. I'd like to hear a little bit about that. Like, see, I don't. We have tons of snow geese, but we have so much private property that they hang out on here. Kevin, don't you agree that it's really yeah, hard to yeah. get in any of that kind of? I feel like, it is. anyways, and it is here too, man. I mean, you it's know. it's pretty rough. It's it's more of a uh, it's like we we tried for this is probably our third year really trying, fourth year doing it, and we've gotten a little bit of more a little bit more permission every year, and then what I've that like what I've figured out is you can ask all the people you want, but until you have that, we, I mean, we talked about relationships earlier, like that's the biggest driving force to our permission, you know, like the people we actually have a relationship with that we've met over the years uh-huh. on accident, you know, just like, Oh yeah, I've been here before. And you, you call that guy. Oh yeah. Okay. Just, you know, uh-huh. as long as I'm with you, you know, you can go because that's kind of the deal. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'm down for that, but also, we, we go out of state some, uh, well, we do most of it out of state. And, uh, anyway, we went last year to Missouri and man, we hunted, we were there for four days actually hunting and trying to, you know, hunting and scouting. And we got one yes, dude. And wow. that was, that was the hardest thing there. I mean, there were more snow geese in a, in a little small area than I'd ever seen in my entire life. And we're talking like, and not exaggerating, like these are, these are fields with a hundred thousand snow geese on it. And, uh, they're just, they're nobody will give permission because they supposedly somebody else has hunting rights to it. And you're like, ma'am, sir, your field will be nothing but mud in the morning because there's, you know, in two days because mm-hmm. there's nothing but geese on it. Like, let us go in there in the morning and shoot them off. And they just they wouldn't, you know, that's fine. Their field, not ours. But, um, so that, that is a struggle everywhere. I think unless you, you know, unless you have that relationship with a lot of people and, um, this coming spring, a pal and I are going to do a, um, it's going to be called a, a state chase as long as everything lines up well. And, um, we're going to basically a week at a time, you know, zigzag the, the, uh, central and Mississippi flyway yeah, and Ooh. just see where they're at as best we can. And, um, I'm, I'm married with two kids, so I can't do it the whole time, but it's right. like a week at a time every few weeks I can jump in and stay the whole week. Uh-huh. But, um, so yeah, that's the plan and it'll be, it'll be a good time. It'll be covered that's, pretty good on the social channel. So you'll, we'll be able to keep everybody updated. Yeah. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it, it is going to be, it was his idea. Um, and we, he just kind of looped me in on it and like, I'm all about it. Cause we, he and I both love like hating our life, I think. And that's why we like the snow goose thing. So we just we're gonna go get our butts kicked together and <laughs> and talk about it. You know, let everybody know like, hey, we won today, but yeah. we fully expect to lose the next six times. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of how it's gonna go. Yeah. And and speaking of like the snow geese, uh, we we get them out here, obviously, but our season, our after after a regular season type of hunting, it's nothing like the Midwest or the. Uh, <clears throat> Mississippi flyway or whatnot, right? We don't have a deprivation type hunt where you can mm. take the chokes out or the, or the, uh, the extended E-collar. tubes, mm. e-collars, oh, yeah. any of that. It's just a five day 
um, two season, two or three weeks after the season, you can go for which some is sex. so weird. It is because we're we're not technically or out here we're not in a deprivation type mode for these geese, right? They're yeah. they're it's just it's almost just for fun, you know. Well, so I, I wondered about that because you guys do have a lot of them, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And I was told that a lot of your snow geese come from like, is it Russia or something like that? Um, you know, gosh, I don't want to put my. And that's why. Out. Yeah, that's why we don't have the conservation like we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's probably. I think you're right. So it blew me away. I'm like, but why? They're everywhere. And no. Yeah, that's why they're not a apparently. problem. Apparently, they're not posing a threat right now. You know, they will just get a little bit right. Uh, we have pretty liberal limits, as you probably know. With them, we could shoot yeah. 10, no 20 snow geese today. Yeah. I'm sorry, 20, yeah. Any, I thought 20 years, it yours, it yours isn't 50. Is it 50? Well, is it your da- no, ours know. isn't, but isn't your oh, you know what? Ours though? is 20. Ours is 20 a day. I think y'all's is 50 a day for snow geese, not no. not in the regular season, maybe in that five day window, Kevin. I don't think so. Maybe though. it's 50 uh, a day. No, I, I mean. I could be totally I don't know off if they that, but... Yeah, I, th- I, I know mean, it's I not in our regular. Right. I know it's not in our regular season. It's d- it is twenty for sure. But maybe in that twenty lights, ten darts. Now maybe maybe there is. But see, if you start changing those special hunts, people say it gets too convoluted. This and that and the other. But you know, I don't know. I'm I I can't be totally clear on the the postseason snow goose hunting. But our but our limit is twenty. 20 a day. And I did, you know what? Yeah. I did not know it was like that down in Louisiana where you guys can get 20 whites. Yeah, we can shoot 20 every single day. Last year, they finally changed it to where it used to. It was like you had to wait two weeks to, do, to start your conservation season. Like if we ended our season on January the 31st, like ducks, which would be a Sunday, um, yeah. you had to wait two weeks to, or 13 days, I guess, because it would be that Saturday to shoot them as conservation. Because what that what they were doing is they had an extended spec, which was like you could still shoot like two specs, you know, but um, mm-hmm. a day. But it's like you could shoot twenty whites all the way to the end of January, and then I, I'm not sure if you could even shoot snows. Maybe you could during that two week time period, but the conservation season didn't start until two weeks after, and that's when you could pull the electronic calls, pull your plugs out, put the tubes on, and go at it. But now it starts the, the day after season ends on ducks. Uh, let's just say January 31st. You can start doing the conservation hunt on February 1st. Oh, mm. okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I confirmed it. The late season, or mid regular season, and early seasons all uh, 20 white geese. Oh, okay. So even the even the, the depredation season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not. Really they're not really dep- considered. It's not, yeah. it's not considered a depredation season. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's just yeah. We have a out here in the BOS or the Balance of State. We have what? What? It's I think it's five days of late mm-hmm. season goose. But then that northeastern zone, um, I think that does that's that's like a two week period, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe even more, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, up there in the northeastern part of our state, you can go for the uh, maybe it's a snow goose hunt. I guess. But yeah, we well, got a couple couple of late. Season well, there's hunts goes. Here. I'm looking at it right now. It goes from Feb 6th to March 10th for the late okay. season white and white fronted geese. But in the um, northeastern zone, and it's yeah, and it's still 20. Oh, yeah. well, that's weird. Yeah. So nothing changes except you just get a few more days or something. Right. It's a bigger <laughs> window. Right. Yeah. You still can't use the e. Yeah. So it's kind of very one dimensional. You know, if you yeah, it's like almost weird. if you wanted to take advantage of it, you'd let us just go and rain on them. But how bad does that not. drive you nuts when they just sit there in vortex and vortex and vortex and never come down? Mm. That's got to just drive you batty almost. It's very nice. <laughs> you like, you <laughs> like it, huh? I like it a lot. I just like the vor. I do like the vortex a lot, man. It, yeah. I just, I don't know. I like y'all. I really like shooting them more. But when we were in Missouri, dude, last year, it was probably the worst. The, physically, the hardest time I've ever been a part of. Because it was just the weather was 30, 30, 35 mile an hour, like constant wind with like 50 plus mile an hour gust. It was wow. raining. Um, it had rained four inches, no, two in, two inches before, like it had rained two inches, two hours before we got there. Wow. 
And, oh, dude, I mean, could you imagine? And we use a lot of socks and silos, thankfully. Mm-hmm. But, like, if we'd have had nothing but full bodies, we would have had either no hunt or a very small spread, you know, mm-hmm. um, which may have worked. I don't know. But I'll tell you that trying to set up a 100 dozen socks and silos um, at that time of day with that kind of condition is not fun nor easy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. But... I, I would do it again if that's just kind of what the recipe called for, but it was tough, dude. Like, hated I hated my life for about <laughs> two and a half, three hours. I bet. Bad, dude. And then we shot, we shot like, I think, three. Oh, man. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> <really. Wow. laughs> they, they hopped on us. That, they, they, hopped, they hopped fields, not fields, but hopped ends of the field. And I think, honestly, a lot of it probably had to do with us, like, trying to get everything set up. And they were starting to fly when we were finishing up. And because the way the weather was, it just slowed up the setup. Like, mm-hmm. it slowed the setup down so much uh, that that we honestly, looking back, we should have just stopped setting up after we had, you know, enough out to make it look like there were geese there. Uh, right. And But we were trying to get the whole deal out, and they started flying over when we were finishing up. And I think they hopped the field, they hopped the side of the field on us because they saw us early and then, when they hopped the field, the first group landed on the other side of the field. I think all the other ones that were, you know, in the air a mi- half a mile back probably just said, yeah, that's where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> and that just started the, started the whole, the deal whole hopscotch. It. Yeah. Oh dude, what a day. But we laugh about it a lot now, but then we were not laughing at all. Yeah. That's ducking right there. Or goose. Yeah. You know, uh, part of the memories. Yeah. That was yeah. That's one you're going to talk about. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Not as much though. Cause it brings, I mean, it, it, it hurts. Brings it's, it. it's painful. It is all over. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. <laughs> yeah. This year it's, it's been, it's just the beginning, but I, I have all these grand schemes and, and there's a lot We're the water issue here in California this year is like mm. really kind of, Oh yeah. Putting a little bit of a damper on damper on it, but well, you know, we're uh, resilient, always, you know, what's, what's that way? Don't, don't you, don't you guys usually have a water issue though? It seems like it. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like from, from where I'm yeah. saying, like where I'm at, like all we hear about is a water shortage in California, like rationing yeah. out, like people are painting their grass green because you can't water it kind <laughs> of thing. We, we <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that, that was a thing. And probably like <laughs> is going to be more of a thing. Um, yeah, I guess technically we always do, especially for, you know, some of our refuges, um, as far as ducking goes, our northern, northeastern refuges, as you, you know, you saw in that Tule, you saw Tule Lake, you yep. know, and lower Klamath. It was kind of, even when you were up there, I mean, it was, uh, it was bone dry for the most part, considering. Yeah, it was pretty low. They told us it was low and that's why the hunting was, it was, it was warmer than normal and it was low. Right. And, that's and it's even not worse good. now. It's even mm. worse now. So, yeah, you know, I, and I tell Titus this all the time. It's like, man, when we start really getting some water here back in this state, we're money, dude, because yeah. we're basically scraping the bottom of the barrel getting things done, uh-huh. you know. Um, so we'll be thriving, you know, whenever mm. that time comes, you know, flooded bypasses, rivers, uh, our refuges are continually full, you know, because I think even our – even our uh, valley refuges, they're getting their water cut, Yeah, you know, so you're not going to have full water on a lot of these refuges, right? So now the quotas won't be as high. Um, so people are going to start, you know, venturing out or maybe even slow down their hunting practice, really, uh, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, and this is a sport, too, that just doesn't have a ton of folk. I mean, I think back in the height of hunt, duck hunting, what was it, maybe 2 million folks? you know, duck hunters yeah. back, mm-hmm. you know, and so it's always been a battle. And then especially out West here, <clears throat> or let's say specifically, I guess, California, you know, when you're, when you're getting all these curveballs, man, it just, and it's tough. And then you can't even get ammo out here. You can't even ship it to your house because we have these laws against it. It's like, well, we're, we're fighting to get new members and people ducking, but why would they want it? It's really yeah. tough. You know, yeah, it's a whole other monster. That. You know, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to really kind of navigate that, man. That's not no, yeah. no real answer, I don't think. Mm-mm. 
Mm -mm. But we get it done. You know, we're fortunate to live here. I mean, and kind of know we can traverse around all this stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, or navigate it and, and we find, and we can find birds. It's not impossible. We just got to work harder. And and fortunately, you know, for Titus actually getting your boat this year, Mm -hmm. you know, I think Mm -hmm. of any year, not that, that was a good a year water, to get it, yeah. Right? I mean, at least it gives you – there. it's not like all the water's dried up, so at least it gives you that opportunity now. Well, dude, you know? the, yeah. like I was saying, the, one of the things, uh, not being specific in locations, but like there, a lot of the places I was going to be able to go was only walking. So if I wouldn't have got my boat, I would have really been, you know, hosed. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. So Because they, they don't – you're not allowed or they're not allowed to like blood stuff in, in this situation, huh? Right. Or they're yeah, just way them. behind on it, you know. They're bringing water in late or whatever, you know. Yeah, Which me and Kevin it. have talked about. Like, okay, how can you bring it in? I, well, I shouldn't. I guess I know the answer to that. Is the reason because you wonder, like, well, how are we going to get water now if you don't? If then, if you don't have it now, well, the thing is, what they're doing is they're trying to make it last. So they bring it in late, and then they're going to run out at the end of January, and then it's gone. You know, and that's kind of yeah, that's wrong. vibration putting mm-hmm. it on later mm-hmm. you know well, and they, if, they, if they put it on later then that means the birds can stay around longer you know yeah and you Hopefully. know what's what's crazy right now is birds that we never like specs everybody's talking about how many specs even myself at night because you know they'll they'll migrate a lot at night and i'm hearing them go over my house and i'm way down in the central valley i'm like my goodness they're passing up a lot of places to get over here that they normally aren't at because there's no water up there you know yeah that's not good not no. for years to come because that's an imprint Yep. Yeah, it is. It is. They're all, they're imprinted there. And I just had a friend up in the Northeastern zone today um, and did not see but a dozen or so specks, mm. you know, they, and yeah. that was a stronghold for them for, you know, hundred years or since the refuge kind of opened, or I guess, yeah. you know, so they are all pushing down here to the Valley mm. faster than ever. Mm. There's nothing yeah. even up there. That's why I know. I mean, it's not for here. Like down here, we're just now about to start seeing more of them. Uh-huh. Um, our, like north of me, there's plenty around. I mean, a, a good ways up, but it's like we normally don't see those specks till like you know this week's pretty early to see them, but it's not uncommon. And then like next week, we'll start seeing. Should because they're they're pretty well calendar birds for us. Like we know we're going to get them. You know, mid October they're going to start showing up, uh-huh. and then they just start piling in pretty good. They're you know early November they're piled up pretty good, but um, yeah. So that's that's odd for you guys because they're just rolling past you, and then we you come down here and there's we've got water. You know, if we want it, we got it. Um, it's just yeah, which that that's how it is. Like I don't know. I mean, it, it just is what it is. And our river system, thankfully, um, you know, we get a lot of water. From if it rains above us, it drains into our river, and we get plenty of water normally. Yeah, but um, never, never experienced a shortage like you guys are, you know, ever. So I, I don't know how to really, I don't know how I could, could handle that down here. Mm. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not like the rivers are dry. It's just, it just definitely makes things tougher, though. You For know? sure, dude. Yeah, I mean, you know? some some of them are too shallow. You can't even. Oh well, you just yeah, tear your yeah. prop up so bad you can't even get in them, you know. But yeah, anyways. yeah, down by Titus, he's got some. He's got some shallower river for sure. Yeah. Well, man, I don't know. What well, I mean, we could talk for days and hours. Do you, anybody else got anything specifically you want to cover in this one? I do this. Hopefully, Wade, this won't be the last one you come on. We love, yeah. love chatting. No, oh, me too, man. That'd be fun. It was a good time. Yeah. 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 Don't want to end on it. Well, you know what? Why don't we end on this? Since I don't like end on a sour note, kind of talking about water issues. But what's your? I'm putting you on a spot here, man. What's your Uh-oh. craziest waterfowl hunting story you have? I, I should have gave you a heads up so you could think about it. But sometimes it's better on the spot. Oh, craziest. Um, I guess there'd be a couple. I got asked this question before, and I, I gave a pretty bad answer, honestly. But I don't want to do that again. Um, Not one on this podcast, Mister. <laughs> the one. <laughs> Minus, minus showing up to a boat ramp to a guy in his underwear. Um, <laughs> it probably really is, honestly. That I mean, would blow my mind, too. <laughs> it moved up pretty high pretty quick. But, um, I would say, dude, like, there was a couple times we went. and where we hunt, I, I don't, I'm sure it's, it's the same. Cause, but a lot of the mud and everything around here is pretty, pretty boggy, you know? Like, 
a lot of it's hard clay, but then you get in some spots, it's a bunch of river silt and it's just, you know, really just, it was almost like quicksandish. And, um, man, I stepped, it was about, uh, I mean, the water wasn't even, you just, you saw water like on top of the mud and it was just really low that year. And we saw where a bunch of ducks were and I was going to go scout for it. And I was just going to walk across, go chip peek over to the levee and see what was there. And I got about four steps in and I couldn't go anywhere. And man, this was a while, this is a long time ago. And, uh, before I knew it, I was about five deep in the mud and my buddies were there and they're like, well, what do we do? You know, how do you, I can't get out. So we're, we're looking at like getting the four wheeler and, um, you know, tying a rope or whatever, just rip me in half, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. Bring you know, the top we, half we realize that. Yeah. I mean, like as long as they can you know, have the open <laughs> casket, we're good. But we, we, uh, we decided against that pretty quick when I started fearing for my life. And we, my buddy, he's a pretty big guy. And he was like, all right, let's figure this out. He went down, down to some really mushy mud and pulled up a tree, like a, probably a four foot, five foot something. I don't know what kind of tree it was. A root system come out with it. And that was the plan. And uh, he threw it to me. And at this point I'm real, I'm rib cage deep in this mud. And I'm like, all right, this is it. I, this is how I go. You know, they're going <laughs> to tell my kids he died scouting for ducks and wasn't smart about it. Huh. Put that and, on my uh, gravestone. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He died scouting for ducks and, uh, or just died for ducks and left it at that. But, um, no, I've, I've actually got a photo of it that I'll have to find. But, um, dude, that old boy threw me that, uh, that tree and I called it and, uh, I literally took it, put it in front of me, pushed the root system down in front of me, and that took the bat, the seal off around me. Mm. And uh, uh, and I was able to push up, and I literally rolled out of that mud hole. Or, and it was a it was a creek, really. And I rolled out because if I would have tried to step out, I'd have been stuck again. Yeah. You know, so I, like you know, surface area is way better than right. yeah. to be bigger yeah. than smaller. And I rolled out and got out, and we just kind of were like, did that just happen? You know, <laughs> did we just have a crocodile dundee moment <laughs> right here <laughs> and we did yeah um it was good um i mean that and i mean dude aside from like like you take that and then all the other hunting trips and um close calls and i've never had a near-death experience hunting um so that's not been crazy but uh yeah dude i mean like i uh i don't know i mean I, as far as the physical side of things that missouri hunt was rough um Almost had a heat stroke in Louisiana during teal season a few years back. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That wasn't crazy, but it was interesting. But um, got a ticket that day, too. Oh, nice. Oh, nice cherry yeah. on top. Okay. It was. I got it before that, though. So it was like, uh, you know, can, can, you, you asked, like, can this, yeah, can this day get any worse? You know, like, as a matter of fact, <laughs> yes, it can. It can get way worse. You can die out here. And then your wife has to pay your ticket, you know? <laughs> Um, uh, gotta pay the dues out from the grave. Yeah, right. But no, I mean that that was one of the craziest times that I remember. And I was probably, man, I'm 35. That was probably 10 years ago, maybe more. Maybe, maybe, dude, it might have been. No, it was right. It was after I was married. I think I don't know. It was around that time, and it was, uh, yeah, it was something else. Mm. But that was that was fun. Oh, dude, one story. Sorry, not a hunting story, <laughs> but but hunting season. I just thought about this. If we have time, I'm going to run through it. Go for it. So, okay. So the whole, uh, the whole first week, I used to live in a part or a, a, a duplex, like kind of townhouse with some pals that I hunted with a lot. And, um, we were there and uh, duck season came and we were pumped about it. Cause it was our first time to live together, like during duck season, we always hunted together, but always had to meet up. But now we could leave from the same place because we slept and, we got up every morning, dude, like it opened on a Saturday. We hunted that entire week together. And, um, I hunted Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I didn't hunt. Yeah. I hunted Sunday morning too before church. And dude, we got done at church and where I went then we had Sunday, we had Wednesday night church. We had Sunday morning church, Sunday evening church. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was dating a girl, which is my wife now. And after, uh, after the Sunday morning church, I went and had lunch. And one thing, like when I get that tired, my, like what I say, I like, normally I'm pretty good at filtering what I say. Right. So, uh, but anyway, so I'm, I, I'll, I'm, I'm there and I'm, everything's just coming out of my mouth. And I'm like, I need to go to sleep because this is bad. And, um, 
we eat lunch and I go to the house, the apartment, and I go to sleep. And then my roommate wakes me up. I think it was Kyle. Kyle or Cody fever. I don't remember. But anyway, they wake me up. And like, hey, man, Brandy's done called you like six times. Cause I, like, I went every Sunday evening. It wasn't like for me to miss. And I missed because I was asleep. And they answered the phone and was like, like, hey, he's sleeping. Like, he's slobbering on the couch. <laughs> and and they, so they woke me up. And I was like, oh, I've already missed church. Crap. Now I'm going to bed. Mm-hmm. So I went upstairs, went to bed. And that was, I don't know what time it was, probably seven, you know, and I had been asleep since like three, you know? So I go back, I go upstairs and I go to sleep and then, then Monday morning rolls around and they're like, Hey, wait, uh, they wake me up real fast, real loud. It's like five in the morning. And normally we leave our house at like 2 AM, but it was a Monday and nobody was really hunting in the area. And we we're like, Hey, wait, wait, you know, it's time to get up and go. And they said, I set up like the exorcist in my bed and I just jumped up like, Oh, I said, man, I thought we already left. And then I just, I just, I went, I went right back down there like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm getting dressed. Let's go. So we, I made the hunt and it was just, it was wild because, you know, I had that whole seven day span or whatever of the, the first, first seven days of hunting season. I had eight hours of sleep the whole week. Oh, right, right. And typical. Oh, dude. So that, yeah. So, I, well, no, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I will admit that is not typical. Oh, really? Guy. No, not oh, eight man. hours in seven days. Like yeah. I'll get a couple hours a night, you know, yeah. but, um, but anyway, that <laughs> happened and what it was, I was working like a three to 12 shift. Like I would oh. work 3 PM to 12 PM and it was perfect for a hunter, you know, oh, yeah. not, not so much for a guy That's that had to pay bills because I would, I would get off at 12 and, and honestly go home, get everything ready. And if I got sleep, great. If I didn't, we would just leave and, Dude, I would get all, I would get on hunting at, you know, 10, 11, whatever, get home, get ready and go to work at three and then do it. just repeat and mm-hmm. then fall asleep on the phone with people. Cause I was a customer service rep. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> luckily, oh. luckily yeah. that place shut down and I got laid off because of the shutdown, not because I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brother Wade was just listening to these folks, you know, let them talk, right? Your customers, I was. let them folks talk. <laughs> Bro, they vented so hard. They, they, they should have given me an award for the best, like best vent, best venter yeah. in the company. Our best, I don't know what that would be, but best listener. Yes. <laughs> I was the venting board. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, funny, dude. That's so funny. Yeah, that's, that's, the, it, no matter the, how much you prep, pack, plan, you always still don't hardly get any sleep during no. uh, day before hunt. I don't know how that, why that happens. Like, why is that? Oh, you dude. Know? Oh, absolutely. Like, this is all pregame stuff right now. I was just, I think I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Paula Goose about this, you know, like getting your blind bag ready on that first hunt after mm-hmm. having a big layoff, dude. You're yep. kind of like, you're all over the I'm place. I'm forgetting dude. something. I know I'm forgetting something. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> you're in and out of the bedroom grabbing stuff. You just were in there. You forgot this. You're like, yep. oh my gosh. Yep. The amount of nervous energy that I have, like, is unexplainable for yep. day one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think I think because we forgot stuff in the past and then we're so paranoid about it. It's like, man, I'm what am I forgetting? I know I'm forgetting something. I've done it before. I ain't doing it again. Right? You know. I mean, <laughs> this this is a sport, right? It's kind of I just like the like perspective, like football, right? You got your preseason, right, where you're working out all the kinks, right? Yeah. And yep. it's kind of true. You don't really get into a groove until a couple weeks in. I think true. You know, you yep. really start clicking. Yeah. Oh, that's the truth. Yep. No doubt. And, Get your sea legs, get your mind right. Um, then you can yes. pack with your eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's kind of funny, I think, how your the stuff you take shrinks. You know, like you like new season, you're like yeah. taking all this extra <laughs> stuff. You know, and it's like two months in, you're like three items. <laughs> like ah, yeah. I don't need all oh, that other dude. stuff. Just extra. No bags. man. <laughs> I think I a lot of you just get tired of carrying. All I, it is you know, man, totally is not necessary at yeah. all. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, headlamp. Ugh, I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, dude, I forgot my thermos on this last trip. Granted, it was early season, but you know, thermos is usually a staple for. Yeah, it. you know, yeah. didn't even bring it on the trip. Yeah. I was kind of like, mm. okay, okay, mm. all right, all right. Thank goodness it's like pre-season right now. Okay, yeah. you you did survive. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I survived. You know, maybe but, maybe you needed it. I mean, you weren't awake yeah. enough to know. 
that the water was not a good idea to jump in. Yeah, you know, and yeah, you know, so it's all, hey, I'm working out the kinks now because in a couple weeks, it's it's game time. Yeah. It's game time. So, yep. kind of thankful for A little for preseason this. football. Yeah. Got to get it out of the way. Get the kinks out. Get those That's flags true. out of the way. Get those penalty flags out of the way. Yep. Okay? It's the hot, it, it's the hot laps, bro. Like, it's the hot laps. You're getting ready for the heat race. Yep. And we're about to have a feature, right? Yep. Yep. You're right. Right. All right. Money. All right. Well, I, I we're gonna end it there. Thanks again, Wade and Kevin, for you guys coming on, and getting this all set up, and and uh, kind of just last minute. But we've been talking about it for a while, so appreciate you coming on, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me, bud. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. You thank will you. hopefully be hearing more from Brother Wade, as Kevin likes to say, and <laughs> <laughs> getting these guys on here. Don't forget to go I'm check so out his great. Instagram and uh, also his website. You want to say that again, since you feel so weird saying it. Oh man. <laughs> um, uh, at Wade Shoemaker for Instagram and then the link to my website, Wade at Wade Shoemaker dot com is okay. in the bio. All right, guys. Appreciate check that. It out. Titus. Yeah. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, dude. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one.